Hi, I'm Erica Carlson with Bricks Real Estate. Thank you so much for joining me today at iHeart Minneapolis Homes, which is also the name of my website where you can search for houses and find out your home evaluation. Hope you'll uh, join me there as well. Today we're going to talk about buying. And so if you know anybody thinking about buying a house this year, tag them below or feel free to share this video. Let's get started. Um, so there's a lot of steps, right, to buying a house. And so you want to find somebody that's comfortable with that process and know that it's a little bit more complicated than other things that you purchase in your life and so uh, when you pick your buyer's agent uh, look for somebody that really understands that process and will navigate it with you um, also you want to find somebody who sets up a custom home search for you typically we're gonna do this through the MLS because remember when you're getting it through Zillow Trulia these types of third-party websites you're getting the information um, at the late side of things. So a lot of times you're looking at houses that are already under contract or have already sold and they're just a little bit slower about um, updating that for consumers. So do make sure you sit down and talk to somebody about your wants and needs. When you hire a buyer's agent, they're working for you as the buyer, not the seller. This is a significant change from years in the past where everybody worked for the seller. So now we have people who just represent buyers and just represent sellers. That doesn't mean that real estate agent doesn't do both things. Uh, some people are very specialized on one side of the transaction or the other. Um, however, you when you hire them, you're hiring them just to represent you as the buyer. Um, and of course, we can go into this in other details. If I were to see you face to face, we can get through all this stuff. So when you meet with your buyer's agent, make sure that they're walking you through that process and then um, also that they understand how to navigate multiple offer situations because as I'm filming this, it's March 2020. We're incredibly low inventory. Interest rates have never been lower, so there's a lot of people out looking for houses. So that means a lot of houses go into multiple offer situations, especially if they're under the $300,000 range. And so um, there's little tips and tricks to help your offer stand out if there is a multiple offer situation. Um, when you hire somebody, you want to pick somebody who removes as much doubt as possible to your um your process and your thinking. You wanna find someone who's gonna give you the tools and keep you informed um, with your education on the topic so that you can make the best choices. Um, I know taking on home ownership is a really big deal. It's typically the most expensive thing we own. So make sure you, uh, as you're interviewing and talking to people, you find somebody comfortable with that. You want to lean on that person once you choose somebody. I know a lot of times people want more than one real estate agent working for them. Um, I'm guessing the thinking is that if one is good, five is better or 10 is better. However, having all these people working for you, not having a contract with them, just means they're all going to be looking for the same house. And I mean, when they send it to you, and then they're also, nobody's really working for you because you haven't made that commitment to them. So it is important to sign that agency agreement. Also look for somebody who's gonna let you out of contract. So if you're not feeling comfortable with the relationship and you'd like to work with somebody else, you know, ask them if they're going to let you out of the contract. That's, um, I would assume most people would let you if you were talking about that with them. All right. Most important thing, buyer's agents don't cost you money. It's not like selling a house. So when you're uh, thinking about who you want, realize that typically most agents aren't going to charge you at all. And so the commission that they're making is coming from the seller when they sell their house. So we write the contract in a way that the seller will cover that. And again, the way it's written, sometimes people write it so that you still might have to pay them if the seller doesn't agree. But again, that is something that's negotiable, something you can talk about. All of this is um, not that complicated to navigate, but 99.9% .9 of the time the seller does pay the commission on the buyer's side, so you have nothing to worry about. If you're having trouble deciding who to hire, I would just boil it down to who are you comfortable with? Who makes you feel like they're knowledgeable about this process? You want somebody who's actively engaged in the real estate market on a daily basis, so they're very aware of what's going on. Um, it's just going to come down to communication style. If you're an emailer and they're a phone caller, 
you know, is that going to work for you if you're at work? Um, just even showing houses, does their schedule match with yours? That's typically one of the first questions I ask people when I meet them because I don't want to uh, move through the process with somebody where ultimately our schedules don't really match up. So to wrap up today, thank you again for joining me. I gave you a surface level. So if you want to go a little bit deeper into the home buying process, I'd love to sit down and have coffee with you or somebody you know that um, wants to know more about this process. Not a problem at all. If you're not comfortable commenting below so everybody can see you're thinking about a home purchase, feel free to direct message me and I should uh, see that as well. Have a great day. Thank you.